Hello, my dear friend, and welcome again to the second level of our ageless yoga journey together. The second chakra is all about how we feel. What is the creative force telling you today? Is it making you want to write poetry? Is it making you want to dance or do some yoga? Well, all the energy of creativity comes from the second chakra right after we have dealt with survival techniques, which is the first chakra. So I wanted you to see my face once again, because all the filming will be done back there. And this is no frills, casual yoga. So I'm going to turn on some beautiful music. It's Love Land by Jay Utah and Ben Leinbach. And they gave me permission to use this wonderful yogic inspirational music while we're doing our seven series. And I, I always play music. I get inspired by music. Sometimes it helps me to slow down. Sometimes it helps me to pump it up. But that's the creative force. So now we're going into the creative energy of the second chakra. We're going to start in a standing position and we're going to slowly align ourselves with both the earth and the entire cosmos and use all this energy for our creative adventure today in the pose called mountain pose. So pretend that you're your favorite mountain. Maybe it's Everest, maybe it's Kilimanjaro, maybe it's a small little mountain in your locale. We're going to start with our feet hip width apart, absolutely firmly planted. Get your toes spread as far as they can and make sure they're hip width apart, not too wide, not too close together and absolutely straight aligned because everything in yoga is scientifically aligned, the, the proper way of doing yoga. And by the way, this is the best way of learning yoga. If you are just starting the one-on-one -on -one that we are establishing here in these videos is the best, except if I was there with you, <laughs> which I can't be, but I am in spirit. And so when you're in a class, there's too many distractions and people have a hard time, especially Westerners of dropping the competition bag. So, for people who get addicted to going to class, I'm sorry, but you still have the journey to explore your inner relationship with yoga, which is an inner journey. And until the day comes when you feel comfortable having a home practice, you have not yet really embraced the essence of doing yoga. Now it's okay to go to a class every now and then to check yourself and, you know, learn a new posture and have camaraderie, but to really have that identification of the self within, the holy temple within, and doing what we do in yoga, which is praying with our bodies, you really need to have a home practice. So you do it every time you can, wherever you are, and you don't get addicted to the class or the clothes or the environment. So as we're settling into Tadasana, feeling the energy of the earth coming up through our feet, envisioning that there's tendrils going down into the earth, grounding us on the earth. We're very much earth creatures. And yet, envision a little door opening at the top of your skull, and out of that door comes rays of energy shooting up into the far reaches of the cosmos. And we are also creatures of the entire universe. We are connected to all. So I like to envision that I'm being lifted up by an invisible puppeteer, stretching my spine and being grounded at the same time. So in other words, for me, I don't feel like I'm doing all the work. I'm having a bargain with the universe and the energy of the planet especially in Tadasana, you can feel it. You're grounded in the earth and you're lifted up by the universe. So just envision that and close your eyes for a minute and start to roll your shoulders back a few turns.
turns to get those shoulders loosened up. And forward a few times to loosen up as you feel yourself being extended and stretched by the invisible forces of the interior of the earth and the vastness of the cosmos. And now take those shoulders up to your ears and try to touch your elbows in the back and feel the shoulder blades flatten on your back and release your hands. Feel your chest expanding. And if you can hold this, it's very nice, but don't make it forced. Try to get a nice, like, flatness in your lower back. You don't want to have any sway back. You, if anything, tuck it under a little bit. I'll be moving around a lot so you can see both sides of my body. And here, most importantly, the palms are facing forward. Check yourself, because if your palms are facing back, that means you are rounding your shoulders. So let's straighten them up again. And that's a good way of always correcting your posture. When you find yourself slumped over, which happens a lot, we're in a computer world, you can quickly turn it around by doing that shrugging, elbows touching, and palms out routine. So let's close our eyes once we're in this nice position and just relax, shake your hands, get rid of all tension, and listen to the breath coming in through your nose and leaving your nose. Tadasana, the mountain pose, is a challenge. Some people find it very difficult to be still while they're standing. Challenge yourself. If you want to just listen or join me, I'm going to chant Om, the seed mantra, with Lam, which is the mantra of the first chakra, and Wam, the second chakra's mantra. Om, Lam, Wam. Om, Lam, Wam. preliminary stretch let's go to the floor so I'm going to be sitting on a block and you can either use towels or a folded up blanket or like I suggested also before a folded up yoga mat which is taped and it comes in handy as a bolster I have lots of old yoga mats around the reason we want to elevate ourselves is because it helps us to get in a better position if you find yourself like this, don't worry about it. Sooner than you think, you will be opening up your hips. So this is what we're doing. We're opening up our hips. The first thing I'm going to show you, see me going like this back and forth and I'm grabbing my hips. I'm doing what's called opening my blossoms. I'm actually manually opening my pelvic bones, which are called the sits bones. And some people can do it without manually opening them because they know how to do it, but I'm just demonstrating. So when I say open your blossoms, I really am talking about your butt, but I like the word blossoms instead. It comes from Anasara Yoga. And imagine your sits bones and here's the muscles and they open and that means that you have a very stable sitting posture. So whether you do it manually or you just rock back and forth and you get those sits bones to open. Feel the difference. The next time you sit, you will feel the difference because if you sit just on your sits bones, you're very tight. 
And when you open up your blossoms, you start to get loose. So now being creative, let's feel how loose we are. Just try feeling the energy of looseness and the creative force coming through you. And we're going to coordinate it with our breath. Ready? Here we go. Breathing in, bring your arms up. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. I'm going to place my right hand on the floor and I'm going to bring my left arm up, breathing in, and bend that right elbow and look up at my hand and hold this nice stretch, keeping both blossoms on the seat. Don't lift up one blossom. Take one more deep breath and release it. Ah, yeah, starting to feel that body open. And now my left hand is on the floor. You might use your fingertips. They're called spider fingers when you put them like that. And you don't have to put them flat. And lift your right arm up, breathing in. Bending the left arm, looking up, keeping both blossoms on that seed of yours, and looking up. Mmm, feeling the sideways stretch. And once again, coming over. Same thing, here we go. Maybe going a little deeper this time, it happens. Breathing in, holding it. Five, four, three, two, one. Coming up and over, and coming up, both blossoms on the floor. Even if you're just going this far, it's fine, or this far. Wherever you are is perfect. Breathing five, four, three, two, one, and coming back. Nice. Bring both arms out. Extend those palms. Have the palms facing up and rotate those shoulders, making sure you're not hunching your shoulders, keeping everything outstretched and aligned. You can look to see how aligned things are and reverse those spirals. We're warming up the shoulders. Warming things up is better first. Today we're going to learn to do the sun salute, which is a total and complete yoga practice in itself. Now reach up, I'm going to grab my right wrist with my left hand holding it, and I'm going to bring a gentle stretch over, just as much as you want or as little as you want, and you feel it a different way than we did before. Hold it up, and come back to the other way. The right hand takes the left wrist, I'm looking up at the ceiling so that I get a really nice stretch with my neck also. And breathing. You remember the breathing. Review the first chakra if you forgot. Here we go. We're going to go a second time. Take that left wrist over the right and stretch it and maybe feel a tiny bit more of a stretch. Be careful. You are your own teacher. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to go too fast. Do it at your own speed, whatever we're doing. We're doing the other side now. Right hand holding left wrist. And come back up. Once again, stretch your arms out. Look up at your ceiling or the sky or pretend you have a sky. Stretch that spine out and give praise for this beautiful day we have. <laughs> every day and come back so we're now going to take the right hand and put it on our left knee and our left hand comes behind us as much as it can go and we're going to do this little bit of a torque a twist and we're going to take our drishti and bring it to the back our gaze with our nice little Buddha smile looking back as far as you want to go and holding it, two, three, four, five, and 
slowly. Everything's done like we're in a sea of honey. Very slowly. Left hand on right knee, right hand behind, and looking behind with our drishti leading. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come back, and we'll do it a second time. Maybe you need to do something like roll your shoulders in between. Please be creative. Do whatever you want. And just take a little break while I explain this word called micro movements. Micro movements means that whatever is happening in your body, even if something like this, we can do all sorts of things. Like right now, I'm engaging my Mula Bandha internally. Check the first video if you forgot what that is. The Mula Bandha is now a micro movement. And I also can go like this, stretch my spine a little more, and that's a micro movement. Or I can bring my head more to my chest, and that's a micro movement. Or I could bring my hands down and do a little internal twist to feel how, see how that feels, and that's a micro movement. So I encourage you to experiment whenever we get into a pose where we're holding it for a few breaths, like just do a tiny little thing, a micro movement, and you'll be surprised at how good it feels. So now we're going to do the same thing we did a second time, but we'll start on the opposite way, just to be creative. We'll take our left hand on our right knee and put our left hand behind us. Sit up as tall as you can and take your drishti way to the back as much as you can. And your eyes are actually going further back than your head is capable of it. And that's about five. And release it, although I didn't count, but it's, I'm just guessing. Right hand on left knee. Left hand goes in the back with spider fingers. The spider fingers look like that. They don't have to be flat on the floor. And we're looking behind and feeling that twist in our spine. Oh yeah, that feels good. And our drishti is way in the back, much further than our face can go. And release. Good. So now if you want to join me, I always try to do a few little neck releases. We're going to just do simple rolls today, very quietly, gently. If you're in a quiet room, you can actually hear the crunching. Make sure while we're doing this, you're keeping your shoulders down. And even put your hands there if you are, have a tendency to hunch your shoulders. Urge your body to have a big space between the ears and the shoulders. Just a few gentle twists. Doesn't have to be anything heavy. We're just getting that neck loose. We got the hips loose. We got our shoulders loose. Our knees are definitely getting loose by sitting here. And I think we're ready to do a sun salute. So a sun salute has 12 different postures, asanas. And together they form what's called a vinyasa, which means flowing. Whenever you hear the word vinyasa, that just means instead of holding a pose, for a long time, or even a couple seconds, a vinyasa has a flow to it. So we do a little bit of everything here in ageless yoga. So now we're going to come and stand up and get rid of our props for a minute. And I'm going to, let's see, which way should I face? I think I'll face this way. So I have a mat going this way and a mat going that way so I can demonstrate both ways. Because I'm so tall, I stand at the top of my mat because we're going to end up in a lunge. I usually always have a mirror in front of me, but in this case, I don't. But I have a mirror there and a mirror there and a mirror there. <laughs> There's only so many mirrors a girl can have, right? So find a spot to stare at. Your drishti is focused on the spot and bring your hands to your heart and get ready for doing a very slow sun salute. The first time we do it, we always want to go slow to open up our bodies 
and just get them ready to do more vigorous yoga. So breathing in, looking at this spot, and breathing out, release your hands. Exhale. Breathing in, inhale, bring your arms up, and if you wish, you can look up. If you're having a good neck day, look up. If you don't, just look forward. And breathing out, release your hands and bend slowly from the waist. Now, get your knees loose there. If you've never done this before, just bend your knees and let's hang here in what's called Uttanasana, which is folded tree. So we did Tadasana before and now we're doing Uttanasana, which is just a tree folded in half. If you have really tight hamstrings, just bend those knees and wherever you are in this even if it's just a little bit of a bend that's okay don't worry your body will open up when it's ready to wherever you are with this just hold it for a few breaths and let your lower back stretch out focus on your breath always and now we're going to Put your fingertips on the floor or you're holding your feet or your um, legs so wherever you are and try to get your back straight with a breath in and breath out fold your body again breathing in stretch it out exhale come closer to your torso breathing in stretch out And exhale, come closer to your legs. We're going to slowly, slowly, slowly come up vertebra by vertebra by vertebra. Keep your head down to the very last thing. Even if it takes you like much longer than I'm doing it, really feel your spine unfolding one vertebra at a time. Now I've gotten to my waist. Now I'm going to my midsection. Now I'm coming up to the upper back. And the very last thing that comes up is the neck. And the head looks ahead at the drishti point. Hello. Great. That was just the warm up for Sanskrit. Here we go. Surya Namaskar is the Sanskrit name of Sanskrit. Breathing in. Always keep your fingers separated too when we do prayer pose. You don't want to have anything tight. You want to just keep those fingers spread. Breathing in and breathing out. If you wish, you can go straight up this time instead of arms out. Try, try that. You, you have a choice whichever way you want. Breathing in and breathing out and bend at the waist again. And we're going to go the next thing, just to prepare you, we're going to stretch our right leg back as far as we can into a lunge. Breathing in, fingertips on the floor, either side of you, and bring your right foot back. Okay, so I'm going to put my knee down. Just for anybody who's a beginner, please make yourself comfortable. Get your knee down first. If you're more advanced, if you're more limber, you can keep it out. Here we're going to talk for a minute about spider fingers so with these spider fingers that are just lightly touching the floor are very useful they come in handy for all different sorts of ways of getting into poses make sure that your index finger is always in front and of course your toe um, your, your big toe is facing forward and in this pose before we go any further you want to make sure your knee is directly over your ankle so whether you're right leg is folded or straight I want you to look up and go as far as you can and feel that stretch you are probably feeling it in your hips <laughs> that this is what is a hip opener and if it feels too much just back off don't go any place into pain if you feel ever any whisper of pain just know that you've gone too far so wherever you are it could be like this you could Nobody's looking, right? Just be comfortable with your body. But for those who have been doing this a long time, it'll look like this. 
And what's happening is energy is shooting forward with my knee and shooting back through my heel. And we're holding this for quite a few breaths. And I'm looking up to stretch everything, really feeling it in my right hip. And now we're getting out of the lunge by putting both hands down on either side of our foot and coming back with both legs in an inverted V. And this is called the downward dog. So if you're tight, please just bend those knees and look to make sure your hands are shoulder width apart. Make sure your index fingers are pointed straight ahead. If you want to be on your knees, that's fine. Wherever you are, just embrace it and be comfortable. Your hands are outstretched. You're gripping with your fingers outstretched. And your arms are strong. So now this is going to be a very challenging pose for anybody who hasn't developed arm strength. Don't worry, your arms will get strong doing downward dog. So wherever you are, you could be anywhere in between a full blown where my heels are down, or you could be with your heels like not even anywhere near down and just getting your arms strong. Just know that it is perfect wherever you are. Hold this for five more breaths. Let your head be totally loose. Shake your head yes. Shake your head no. Make sure there's no tension in your head at all. No tension being held anywhere. So if you need to break, to have a break, let's go into child's pose right now. You spread your knees as far as you can. You get those feet comfortable and you bring your head down to the floor and just rest. Totally let go. Whenever you need to take a break, just go into child's pose. It's known as a restorative pose. It will restore your energy very quickly. Wherever you feel you need a break, just go into this. Balasana, the child's pose. And so we're going to go back, and here we are in the down dog. So now we're going to come ahead and be in a plank. So even if you're on your knees, you can do a plank. Wherever you are, you try to do a plank. So the weight is on your hands. So if you're doing a full plank, make sure your spine is straight. If you're doing a half plank, make sure you're comfortable. If you need to bend your elbow or get it down like that, just do whatever you can. With m Those are m bigger than micro movements. Those are macro movements. Just holding this for a few breaths. Then put your knees down with your elbows very close to your body, very close. Slowly lower yourself. And we're going to come up to an up dog. So first we look ahead and are, if you lose your fingers, your fingers are just on the uh, outermost edge of where your shoulders are, and you're going to push yourself up. And again, be creative. This could be like a dancing upward dog. It could be a solid upward dog, but you don't want to hunch your shoulders. You want a big space between your ears and your shoulders. You're just getting used to the downward and upward dog. Now you're going to come back to downward dog. So you just easily curl your toes under, push yourself back up, and voila, we're in downward dog again. Yeah. Sometimes I forget the Sanskrit names, and they're not important. Sometimes I make up new names. Sometimes I call this woof, woof, <laughs> the downward dog. So see, I'm having fun with mine. When you eventually get comfortable, you can start doing all sorts of things and be creative with your downward dog. At any time, you can start being creative. But it's best to learn the proper alignment first. And then within the proper alignment parameters, 
You can do all sorts of things with your body, with the micro movements. Again, what I'm doing here called walking the dog is more like a macro movement. You can see it. The micro movements you can't see. Okay, we're getting ready for the other side lunge. We're looking forward now. Your eyes go first. The drishti is always the first thing that moves in a vinyasa. And now we're thinking, right foot, come up. <laughs> okay, now, beginners, of course, you're going to go boom, 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 boom. You might even have to help it. It's okay. Wherever it is, get it up there. You can put your knee down, don't forget. Make sure your right knee is right over the right ankle. And stretching out or just being however you can in this pose. Just feel the wonderful lunge opening on your other side of the hip. It's my left side of the hip that's opening now. And the more you look up, the more you extend your body the more you're feeling the stretch in your left hip. Ooh, a plane is going overhead. Can you hear it? I'm in my Santosha Shack, my special yoga place. And now we're going to look down right between where our two feet are and we're going to tell ourselves to hop forward. And however it takes, whether it's one hop or a million hops, <laughs> you're going to get there however you can and just stay down here in Tadasana which is also called ragdoll you just want to totally relax when you're here bend those knees as much as you need so you don't feel any pull in your hamstrings are going to slowly open up and now we're going to come up again and if you want to do the slow vertebra by vertebra you can do that or you can have stronger abs and bring yourself up however you wish to do it. Be creative. Bring yourself up to a full extension and bring the energy down to your heart. We always start from the heart and we always end up at the heart. My eyes are totally focused on the drishti point, which I have determined is a little smidgen. Oops, I just dropped it. <laughs> Find a point that you can focus on. And if you need to, you can use a little tiny pencil mark. Here we go. We're going to do one more today. And every day we will get better and better and better at our Suya Namaskar. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in either forward or sideways. Stretching your arms up and breathing out bend at the waist you can keep your knees bent or not and slowly go back down to folded tree this time think your left foot is going back get your spider fingers on either side of your feet and put your left foot back with a breath in here we are stretching on the other side so once again, you be your teacher. Do you need to have your knee down? Do you need to have it up? Only you know. So if you are feeling really stretched out and you can do this, you can move back and forth, or you can just keep it stationary. But feel that stretch. This is almost like a yin style down a uh, downward dog and sun salute and everything yin means that you're holding the poses a long time but it's very good when you're just starting your yoga practice to hold poses rather than to go fast and now we're ready for down dog so both hands are planted they're not spider fingers and you come back with both feet together hip width apart you can be up on your tippy toes if you want that's kind of cool or you can have them knees bent. So let's talk about the arms for a minute while you're holding this pose. You want to make sure that your elbows are, are almost kissing each other. They want to be together. They don't want to be spread out, in other words. So you want to have your entire forearm and upper arm engaged. 
and there's a spiral going inwards. It's hard to describe, but if you think of your shoulder joint as being a pivoting joint, you're going to think about turning it inward as opposed to turning it outward. It's a very fine adjustment, and you will understand what that is in time. But first you have to develop your muscles. So now we're gonna do one more plank, looking forward first with our drishti, right between the arms, the hands, I mean. And we're coming up and either to make it a half with your knees down or a full plank with strong arms. If you can't do the strong arms yet, just do whatever you can and they will build up. Just be kind to yourself wherever you are, embrace that you are perfect. And you will get stronger and more limber as time goes by. So put your knees down. Now instead of going down like we did, we're going to start doing the swoop. Eventually it's going to be part of the movement and you'll see how it all works together. So you might want to try that a few times. We're, we're actually making like a little bow here. Take your head and come down and up. It's almost like doing a, a little push-up, but it's slow motion. Down and up. This will get coordinated in the next video when we do a more fluid downward uh, sun salute. And so we end with, this is called the full cobra. And if you come down here, we're coming up gracefully to a full cobra. <laughs> Just for the heck of it, I want to show you a small cobra. So you probably need a break by now anyway. So just slowly come down to the floor. Put your forehead on the floor. And a small cobra is from the waist down. Your body is just tight, like one tight snake muscle. But every muscle is engaged. From the waist down, you can't see it, but it is an isometric uh, engagement from every muscle from my waist down. With my hands in the same position where we just came down from the plank, push into the floor as hard as you can and lift your head with your shoulders back and just look ahead as much as you can. That's a small cobra. And hold it for a count. Five, four, three, two, one. And slowly bring your forehead back. Great. And relax. <laughs> Just let your muscles go. You can even stretch out. And we're going to do that a second time. Cobra is Bhujangasana. Ah, feels so good to relax. Bring your hands back and we're ready for our second cobra, small cobra. So make sure your fingertips are right where the edge of your shoulders are, your forehead's on the floor. From the waist down to your toes, it's one big strong snake muscle. Lift your head up, just gently. Feel every muscle engaged in your back. Slowly look forward. And you don't wanna push up with this one. You just want to look forward and feel that stretch down your entire spine and hold it and slowly bring your head back down and let's push back to child's pose so we really understand the child's pose push all the way back spread those knees and bring yourself into a comfortable position and just relax it's very important that you know that you can get into the child's pose whenever you need and how easy it is to get into it. And within a few seconds, you're rejuvenated. So we're going to complete our sun salute. We were at uh, a little uh, upward, upward dog and we're going to go back to <laughs> downward dog. So get your little feet curled under and push yourself back to downward dog. 
Once again, you just feel comfortable here, wherever it is. Be creative. You could go from side to side. It's called walking the dog. Or you could just go on your knees and just stretch yourself out, knowing that this is a half a down dog. Wherever it is that you are having a relationship with this pose, that's perfect for you. That's what the second chakra is all about, creativity and spirituality. We go right for the juggler when it comes to consciousness. <laughs> first, you know how to survive, which is the first chakra. Then you get creative and spiritual in one next leap. And you're looking forward now, and I'm thinking I'm bringing my right foot forward. Let's see, we brought, yes. We bring our right foot forward, and so that might be, no, I think it's, oh boy, I think it's this one. <laughs> I think we just did the other side. I get a little confused when we go so slowly. So my left foot is forward, left knee is right over left ankle. This is the lunge part of the down, of the sansara. Feel that stretch in your right hip. And we're getting ready to come back up. Look down at your drishti point and either hop, 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 or just with one or two hops, bend forward, relax in Tadasana. You can hold opposite elbows just to give yourself a little more weight if you wish. Don't forget to bend those knees as much or as little as you need. Exhale, and with an inhale, bring yourself up. You know how to do it by now. Either slowly, vertebra by vertebra, or with a big swoop. There you go. So looking forward, we're going to stretch our legs out. Make sure you're pigeon-toed here because that acts as an, as an anchor. Just feel yourself very secure. If you're just a little bit stretched out, that's okay. Just feel the stretch. This is called five-pointed star. Bring your arms out. Once again, just look to make sure you are aligned properly. Bend at the waist. Come down and hang. If your knees are bent, that's fine. We're going to take our right hand, hold our left ankle. It could be on the inside or the outside. And you want to bring your head as close as you can to your left knee. With your arm, you can either lift it up now here, we're engaging our Mula Bandha that we learned about in our first chakra video. With that Mula Bandha secure invisibly, your lock, your base lock internally, your balance is very firm. Bring your left hand down and bring your head to the center and hold both feet with both hands just to feel the symmetry of this five-pointed star that has now become a folded five-pointed star. And you see I'm kind of moving. I like to move with the energy I'm feeling. If you're static, that's fine. But if you feel like moving, just let yourself do whatever feels comfortable. And I'm going to take my left hand now, bring it to my right ankle put my head on my right knee. I can either keep my right hand down here for stability if you want, but my mula bandha is engaged, so I'm strong. And once your mula bandha is engaged, you have more balance. And you can bring your arm up. You can even make it into a, a twist if you wish, if you feel more secure with your balance. And bring it back down. Bend your knees a few times. Feel that flexible ease, how comfortable it is. 
and we're going to do it a second time. Right hand to left ankle, in or out. Head to left knee, arm either up or on the floor for stability. Make it into a full stretch or just keep it easy and comfortable. My drishti is always focused on a spot. Don't close your eyes, you'll get dizzy. One more breath. And bring it back. Feel the symmetry of being in the center first. Now take the left hand to the right ankle, right hand either up or wherever you want. It could be just stabilizing you. Be creative. Get your head as close as you can to your body and feel the joy of letting your body be your teacher. Your body is saying, congratulations. You're doing this awesome inverted five star and bring your hand to the center. And let's go up on our fingertips, stretch that spine out, put your hands on your waist and go in, out, in, out, in, out and bring yourself to center. And I think we should come down to the floor and do some, some uh, stretches here. So one of my favorite ways of opening the body is a pose called Janushirsasana. Uh, uh, Janushirsasana. I'm, I think I'm going to show you how to do it, aligning yourself with your mat. So you want to make sure, I'm starting off with my left leg extended and it's parallel with my mat. I'm sitting up on my blossoms and my blossoms are open. So if you want to open them up manually, go right ahead. We're going to be doing lots of this stuff. So you may as well get used to it. Open up the blossoms. You grab the flesh and make it, and you can actually feel those sits bones when you do that. So when you have an extension, uh, like we have with our left foot, the energy is shooting out of the left heel. Toes are pointed up or back toward the face. Don't go like this. This is a dancer's foot. And in yoga, we have the energy shooting out of the heels most of the time. And so our right leg, for any of you who uh, can get it closer to the body, you want to have it so that the heel is in the center of your body. If you, don't worry if you can't get there. If it's like this, it's fine wherever you are, but you want to be up on those sits bones and you don't want to have rounded shoulders. So you want to align yourself with those shoulder rolls that we did before. If you have to do a few of them, go for it. And we're going to put our foot in the middle and we're going to put our hands together in prayer position. Now you see I'm at this angle. So we're going to breathe and come and move ourselves toward the foot. Breathing in, come up. And now we're going to come forward as much as we can. It may just be a few inches. If you want to, you can have stability of putting your hands on the leg. And even if you just do a few inches like that, it's fine. Eventually, you will loosen up everything and you will be going down breath by breath by breath until you finally get to a place where you can just rest and feel the extension all the way. But be very kind and slow how you get there. Breathing in and come back up. We'll go to the other side now. The right leg is parallel with the right edge of the mat. The left foot comes in as close as it can. Now, if you're just there, that's fine. We can still do the pose. I'm gonna show you how we can do it on this side. Breathing in, we're at this angle. Let's bring our arms up first, breathing in, and look towards our leg. And we're going to come forward just as much as we can, even if it's a few inches, we could hold on to some part of our leg and just hold it, hold it, hold it as much as you can and feel the energy loosening up muscles and ligaments 
and tendons and energy being creative in you. And release. We're going to go right into Tadasana, which is everybody's favorite pose. This is the aware corpse. And you want to just be relaxed. This is where we're going to have everything come into assimilation. You want to make sure your, your hands, your palms are facing up. So your shoulder blades are wrapped on your back. Your feet are not real close, but they're not far away. Your head is perfectly relaxed and in alignment. And you're focusing on your breath. And this, my friends, is a beautiful way for you to relax and enjoy your breath for a few moments. And I'll see you on the next chakra the third chakra, where we will learn how to own our own power. Namaste.